Hey, y'all, this is JR, one half of the R&B representatives. Shout out to my sister, Naturally Elise. And this is the ninth episode of JR's Motown Life. The song that I will be discussing is The Contours, Do You Love Me? Uh, do you love me? Hey, do you love me now that I can dance? Uh, watch me now. Oh, don't let my hat fall. But, <laughs> but this song was released June 1962. It was number two on the Hot 100. It was number one on the R&B charts. And it was number three on the Cash Box. Uh, 100. It was written and produced by Barry Gordy. Y'all, so y'all going to get a couple of backstories for this. So, you know, you're getting two sides. So it's always the truth in the middle somewhere. But both stories are kind of similar for real, for real. But hey, you can take it how you want. You know what I mean? So according to Barry Gordy, he actually wrote this song for The Temptations because The Temptations was signed by then. But the songs that you know, they were getting wasn't becoming hits. So he sat at the piano, he wrote the song, but the Temptations didn't show up that day. They went to, you know, to see another act or something like that. They didn't come to the studio that day. So the Contours was there, you know, he was like, all right, well, you know, guys, come and try this. And they tried it. Boom. It worked. And history was made. You know what I mean? But according to the founder of the contours, Joe um, Billingsley, he said that they was already in the studio making another record. And he said that um, they saw Barry at the piano, like doing this song. So they all sat by him and Barry was like, well, won't y'all try this? And they were trying it and they weren't doing it the way Barry wanted it. So he was he was like, you know what? I'm giving this song to the Temptations. So Joe was like, no, 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 give us one more time. And he actually did it right. And Barry was like, now that's how I want it to sound. Come to the studio tomorrow and we're going to cut this record and this record is going to be yours. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that the Temptations could have had a record like this because they didn't have a powerful vocalist like you know, Billy Gordon, like you needed that power. And I could say maybe Al during that time, because this is 1962, y'all. So uh, David wasn't there. And you know, Dennis wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? So who could have done the power like this? Because it was like Eddie was kind of like the lead. You know what I mean? Then they try and Paul don't have a powerful voice like that. It is, but, mm, but so for me, you needed a Dennis. But Dennis didn't come to the Temptations until 1968. So I don't even see this on being for the Temptations. But what's so crazy is that Dennis Edwards ended up taking over for Billy Gordon when he got sick. And he ended up taking over for the Contours. And then after he did that, he came to the Temptations, which is crazy. You know what I mean? So he's still in the mix with that. You know what I mean? But and how Dennis ended up coming to... Motown was because of the king of the bass player, James Jameson, ended up helping him get, you know, uh, um, seen from Barry and them. Um, and so he can, you know, be a part of the label. And then, you know, he ended up going to the Temptations. But what's so crazy, why they were making this record, Barry said that him and James Jameson was kind of going at it. Because the Funk Brothers at that time, they were, you know, jazz swingers. You know what I'm saying? That They played like that, but Barry wanted it on a two-time beat. And they didn't really like that at all. But, hey, this is what Barry want. You follow the instructions. You know what I'm saying? So they're in the studio, and James Jameson are playing, playing the way he want, very jazzy or whatever. And Barry was just, like, getting sick of him. He's like, what? Follow what I'm giving you. So, you know, Barry said he had to kind of stare at James at, you know, making the whole record. And then he said he kind of turned his back quick. And James Jameson started playing jazzy and swing. And then he turned back around and James went into what he was supposed to be playing. And Barry said he had to smile because of the brilliance of him going back and forth. You know what I mean? So, yo, that's just crazy. Like, the backstories that you get for these songs, like, it's just so, so, so dope. You know what I mean? But this song was covered by, like, 30 people. But you had the... um. 
Dave caught five that did it in 1963. It was cute. It was cute. And then you had the Supremes that did it. And then you had the Chipmunks that did it in 1988. And I'll never forget that because my mom had the VHS. So I just remember as a kid, just, you know, trying to sound like them as a kid. I probably didn't know what the hell I was saying, but trying to sound like them because they sound so high, high pitch. You know what I mean? But when it comes to this song, it's a classic. This is kind of what the contours are known for. You know, they had another hit, you know what I mean? But it wasn't as big as this, so they kind of considered one hit wonders. But when you hear, you know, Billy coming in just talking and then that beat coming, do you love me? You be ready, you know what I mean? So this song is a classic. I wanted to talk about it. So y'all got a couple of backstories about it. So hopefully I will see y'all next week with another episode of JR's Motown Life. Peace.